This is the MRF 101 kit assembly video. What you've got to do to uh, assemble this successfully is one, prepare all of your tools and documentation as well as getting your components ready for the assembly. One of the tricks that we use is to use a uh, double-sided tape and attach it to the bill of materials and then stick the small surface mount components uh, to that right beside their entry on the bill of materials uh, list. This makes it easier when you're uh, doing the assembly itself to uh, find the correct component. The other uh, piece that we use the double-sided tape for is to attach the small printed circuit board to a suitable surface so that you can solder without it moving around. This should be out of some uh, heat resistant material, here I'm using aluminum, as the printed circuit board itself has a lot of through hole vias that will conduct heat from the front to the back. So once you've got your work area prepared with your layout and your bill of materials in front of you and your appropriate tools, tweezers, small soldering iron, some flux, wire solder, uh, typically it'll be 60-40 uh, but you can use other materials uh, depending on uh, what you would uh, prefer. So one of the things I do is really uh, starting left to right, going from the smaller components to the larger components. Uh, the reason for that is that when you put larger components down, sometimes it's hard to get your tools in beside them. So if we do it uh, set uh, in a systematic way with uh, left to right and then small to large, it'll make the assembly go uh, more smoothly. So. Here you can see we're starting and we will then speed up and go through the, all of the pieces until we get towards the end. Okay, so after the surface mount parts are all mounted on the board, double check that there are no solder bridges, shorts and all of the uh, joints are good quality. Then it's time to remove the board from your assembly jig. So one of the things you want to do is because you use tape and it did get hot you want to clean off any residue on the back and double check that no solder has flowed through the vias to the back side. Next step is to mount the board and the connectors to the base plate. So the base plate has holes towards one side they are on the uh, board side. Also we want to trim the power transistor right at the shoulder. The step now is to mount the printed circuit board, uh, making sure that the surfaces are clean, and using screws and washers on each of the three locations. Okay, next to is to assemble the connector, noting that there's a flat side on the, uh, the center pin. Make sure that is parallel to the printed circuit board. Finally, solder the center pins to the printed circuit board. Uh, after the connectors are soldered, uh, time to mount the main power transistor. For that you need some um, silicon heatsink compound. Uh, this is, should be put on sparingly, but not so sparingly as the, um, any of the small uh, gaps will not be filled. To check, once the part is uh, pushed down, it should just squeeze a little bit out the, uh, the sides of the part, but no more. After uh, placing the part, uh, put the th two washers and screw for mounting the device. Square washer against the device, uh, followed by a spring washer, and then tighten the, the uh, screw. After the screw is tightened, it's time to solder the leads. The leads should not be soldered before the screw is tightened. Tighten screw, then solder leads. This minimizes the stress on the lead. So here we have the completed project and uh, do a final inspection. You may want to clean up some of the uh, flux residue with some alcohol, uh, but that is uh, optional. And that brings the video to a conclusion. So thank you very much for watching this video. And if you need any information, uh, please contact your NXP distributor.